G'day Year 12 and welcome to another YouTube lesson. We're looking today at the second business function we go through at our school, which is finance. Now, finance is one of four business functions that we address in business studies in Year 12. The first one is HR, which we've already done, human resources. We look at finance, which is um, how you manage, look after your finances and your financial situation within a business. We then look at operations. And the final business function that we address in business studies in year 12 is marketing. Now, in terms of um, business studies, whether it be HR, finance, marketing, and so on, there's a few different parts to the syllabus. And we're gonna be looking through the syllabus of finance today. I want you again to just go over and understand how it's put together, how it works. So in terms of the finance syllabus, but the same with HR and the other business functions, you have two key parts that you need to have. The first one that you see there is students learn two. Now, we don't tend to explicitly, which means go through and explain to you, um, the student learn two. But if you take a look at the end of the booklets that I've given you, the finance booklets, you'll find each of these students learn two syllabus dot points and I've done all the hard work for you. And I've gone through and got that syllabus dot point and explained what you would need to include in there, giving you a model response. But what we do go through and what we do explicitly teach to you guys is the students learn about. I'll go through the students learn too quickly beforehand, then we'll have a chat about the students learn about. As always with your syllabus, this is your Bible, it's your go-to. You need to make sure that you can be honest with yourself concentrate and tick off each of these syllabus dot points because you don't want that to be the dot point you don't fully get for your HSC exam in the future. So make sure you can tick off and you know the answer to it. All right, under the headings there, students learn too. The first one we've got there is to explain potential conflicts between short-term and long-term financial objectives. Very quickly, we're looking at um, the five key financial objectives and there's some of them like liquidity that is short term and solvency that's long term. And there's often trade off. You, you can't get all your short term and all your long term objectives in one. You usually got to compromise a bit. And there's some conflicts that we'll be looking at. The second one and two uh, syllabus dot point from students learn two is to analyze the influence of government and the global market on financial management. The third dot point is to identify the limitations of financial reporting. And that's a hard one, but if you look at the back of your financial uh, or finance booklets, you'll see what things to include in there. And that's actually marries up, matches up with one of the students learn about. Now, the next one is to compare the risks involved in domestic and global financial transactions. The hot tip is Australia is a pretty safe joint and therefore, a technical term joint, and uh, therefore domestically, you know, there's less risk involved usually. Globally, there's more reward and more access to funds perhaps, but it is more risky. Now, the last four student learn two syllabus dot points are to calculate key financial ratios. I don't know if it's the nerd in me, but I, I like that. I don't think they're all that difficult. And if you spend a reasonable amount of time doing your ratios, they even give you the formulas these days, which is a bit stupid, but anyhow, they give it to you, you should be able to remember then you'll be fine with those things. Things like net profit ratio, return on owner's equity, and so on. We look next at assess or assessing business performance using comparative ratio analysis. It's using these ratios and looking at whether a business is good or crap. And using comparative ratio analysis, you're comparing ratios between different businesses, different time periods to see the trend, the pattern. Is it better or worse? Second last student, learn to dot point is to recommend strategies to improve financial performance. And you probably want to match that up to the five key business objectives. Uh, and we'll get into those a bit later on. The last student learn to and all of these can be potential HSC questions for essays, or questions for short answer. So treat it like that, make sure you get it. You need to examine ethical financial reporting practices. And you take a look at how the banks have gone over the last few years in the Royal Commission, maybe they should have taken a look at that syllabus uh, dot point there. That's good jokes.
Okay, now, in terms of um, the next part of the syllabus, the students learn about all four business functions. Again, test yourself, what are they? HR, you said that correct. Finance, we're doing now. Marketing and operations. All those four are very similar, you know, in terms of their, their format and their structure with the students learn about. And this is why business can be crappy sometimes, but it also is a bit boring and dull. But it can also be good because it's easy to remember these dot points. You can almost like take a virtual copy of the syllabus in your HSE exam. That's the, the benefit, the good payoff. They're all the same. They have the role of finance or financial management, the role of operations, the role of for marketing. What do you think it would be? If you didn't say marketing, drop business studies. The role of HR and so on. Then you have influences on finance or influences on marketing, etc. Then you have the process of finance or the processes of operations. Following that, you have strategies to do with financial management or what strategies can operations use or HR use. The only weird difference is for HR, which you've already done, they have the HR effectiveness criteria on top of these four subtopics, if you will. I think every business function should have it, but it doesn't make sense that they just give it to one. But anyhow, we're able to evaluate each other business function through other parts of the syllabus, and we'll look at those later. In particular for finance, we use the five key financial objectives, profitability, growth, efficiency, liquidity, and solvency. But you'll start to see, or in HR we've done with finance, a pattern in the students learn about. And that's actually a good thing. It'll help you remember how to answer questions properly. It fits it all in place nice and nice and easily. All right, so the first business uh, subtopic as part of this finance topic is the role of financial management. Role of, its job, what's it there to do? The role of me, side teaching you, is to be awesome. Tick, tick, both of those things done. Now, under the role of financial management, you've got the strategic role of financial management. Strategic means what? We've already done this. It should be easy. We did it when we did HR. You'll do it when you do operations and marketing. Long term, three or more years is the strategic role of anything. The role of finance in this instance. Remember the short time frame though is the operational time frame and the tactical time frame. From one to three years tactical, less than a year, or day to day is operational. Okay, but that's the strategic, the long term role the job of operations management. And we'll look at that in the next lesson. And the role of operation or role of financial management rather, we also look at this very important part called the objectives of financial management. In an essay, when you're asked to evaluate financial management practices, I want you guys using these five right, objectives to say whether they're good or crap at doing their job. Has the business been able to increase profitability? If so, by how much? What about has the business grown? If so, by how much? Efficiency is to do with uh, cost and speed. Is it doing things quicker? Is it doing things cheaper? If so, statistics. Back it up, case studies. Liquidity is a business, does a business have enough uh, working capital, which means uh, does it have enough current assets to pay their current liabilities if they fall due? That's a short-term one. And solvency is a long-term one. Debt to care compared to equity, if you think of your uh, balance sheet, your liabilities, your debt in comparison to your equity. Tip, you want a fair bit more equity compared to debt if you want to have a greater chance of being solvent. Solvent is good. Insolvent is bad. It's being bankrupt. Then we take a look with the objectives of financial management of the short-term objectives versus the long-term objectives. And you saw that, I think, above when those students learn too. And these things tend to match up, the students learn about, with some of the students learn too. Now, the last part of the role of financial management is the interdependence with other key business functions. We've already done how HR is independent with finance, so we don't need to do that again. But how is finance interdependent with operations and vice versa? And how is finance interdependent with marketing and vice versa? We're going to take a look at that in future lessons. Now, the second subtopic 
of finance. By now, if you don't know, there's some issues. We've done roll off. It would be influences on financial management. And inside that, we look at internal sources of finance, such as retained profit, things that the business can get inside itself. That's not in great detail, though. Then we also look at external sources of finance. The source of finance is where you get things from. Not source like tomato sauce, if you didn't realise. It is where you can get this money from. You source it. We've got two types, one, two, of external sources of finance. There's debt. Let's think loans to keep it simple. And there's equity. Let's think shares, again, to keep it straightforward. There's pros and cons of both of those. And they both have different influences. Some of the debt includes some short-term debt, such as overdrafts, commercial bills and factory. And there's some long-term debt or borrowing, mortgage, debentures, unsecured notes and leasing. In terms of equity, we have ordinary shares that we study in year 12 business. And we've got new issues, rights issues, placements, share purchase plans or SPP represent, and we have private equity. Private equity is a bit different to the ordinary shares because it's for private companies, PTY, LTD. And we'll look at some examples of those when I teach it to you. Now, the next influence on finance are financial institutions. And these are the bodies, the institutions involved in, often these sources of uh, funds and finance, and they sort of play in together. So we take a look at banks, which are like retail banks, Commonwealth, you know, CBA, Westpac, these are the banks you know about. Investment banks, you don't know so much about, like Macquarie Equity, we'll take a look at that. We look at finance companies, superannuation funds, life insurance companies, unit trusts or, or managed funds, and also the Australian Securities Exchange, ASX. It's the merger between the Sydney Futures Exchange and the Australian Stock Exchange and I created the Australian Securities Exchange. And they're there to be able to do a number of things, to be the watchdog, but also to be able to um, be the marketplace where the ordinary shares and other types of shares are bought and sold. And we look at how these mostly, and just to find them, you need to know how they impact, influence businesses and businesses' finance. We'll take a look into that later. We also look at the influence of government through ASIC, Australian Securities and Investment Commission, and also through company taxation for those economics kids, but business kids need to know this too. Company taxation is called fiscal policy. It's not written in the syllabus, but we also want you to be aware of monetary policy, which is the, the increasing of interest rates or the reducing of interest rates to tighten or to expand um, you know, our economy. But that's not the government because it's the RBA, the Reserve Bank of Australia, but it's kind of inside there. They are separate a bit though. The last influence we address in finance are global market influences. This was part of the 2018 HSC. See how all kids do? That may pop up again though. We've got economic outlook, availability of funds and interest rates. And all these global influences can have a massive impact on Australia, which is a small open economy. All right, the next part of finance is the processes of financial management. These aren't the influence, these are the set of steps that a financial manager goes through in their job. A set of processes, set of steps, they will plan and implement. It's the first syllabus dot point. They'll look at the financial needs of a business. They'll set out budgets as part of their role or part of their, the process in their job. They'll uh, have record systems in place. They'll identify financial risks. They'll have in place financial controls. Part of processes includes debt and equity financing. Which would you pick? Depends, as always I say, always depends. There's pros and cons of each, those advantages and disadvantages. This could be a good discuss question in the HSC. So why have debt? Why have equity? Both are good in different ways. We'll address that. Now you want to match the terms and source of finance the business purpose. That's the next student learn about dot point. There's no point if you need um, a sudden amount of money, just a quick short term amount of money. Yeah, mate, I'll go get myself a mortgage. That's not going to work. That's matching an incorrect 
um, need a finance with the wrong source. So you need to make sure that it, it matches up. All right, the next one that we've got there include part of process is monitoring and controlling. It's vital to see, to ascertain how your business is traveling. We can use cash flow statements, income statements, also called revenue statements, or old school profit and loss statements. And we can also use a balance sheet to monitor and control a business. Now, financial ratios, this sometimes can be a massive part of the business course, depending on the exam, sometimes not so much, but you must make sure you can do it. And it really is year eight maths. If I can do it, you guys can. And they give you now the ratios, which is kind of pretty cruisy, pretty ridiculous. So we have different ratios. The first one being liquidity. It's also called the liquidity ratio or current ratio. And that's thinking about a balance sheet, your current assets divided by your current liabilities. You have the gearing ratio, which is not surprisingly called debt to equity ratio. And you, 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 you do your total liabilities divided by your total equity. Now, I want you to times it by 100 to get the percent. The syllabus doesn't say that. Naughty syllabus. But that's the answer that we're asking for gearing or your debt to equity ratio. And that there again looks at which financial statement? It looks at your balance sheet. Profitability has a number of different ratios, three key ones. You've got the gross profit ratio, GPR, and it is gross profit divided by sales. Again, I want you to times it by 100 to get a percent. You have your net profit ratio, which is your net profit divided by sales times 100%. And the last one, which is probably the most useful, is return on equity ratio, R-O-O-E, or R-O-E, depending on which teacher's teaching it to you. That's your net profit divided by your total equity, which also includes that net profit, times 100. Now, the next ratio looks at another objective, which is efficiency. You've got two ratios for efficiency. First one is the expense ratio, which is your total expenses divided by sales. Again, I want it as a percent times 100. So this doesn't say that, but do it, must do it. And the second efficiency ratio it's a bit stupid because there's two parts to it. And they only put one part in the syllabus it's called the accounts receivable turnover ratio. Now, which is sales divided by accounts receivable. And that gives you a number. Let's say it gives you 10. What does 10 mean? 10 talks about you, you collect as a business on average, your accounts receivable 10 times in a year. If you got five as that number, sales divided by accounts receivable, that means you collect your accounts receivable on average five times throughout the year, not days. To find how many days on average it takes you to collect your accounts receivable, it's the number of days in a year, which is 365, three out of the four, three out of the four days. Okay, so 360 divide five, 365, divided by the answer you got from that first step. And that'll tell you the number of days it takes to get your accounts receivable. It's easy. When we do that lesson, you'll get it. Now, the last ratio that we take a look at is this or this concept is comparative ratio analysis. Okay, look at comparing different ratios. Otherwise, it's just a number or a percent it mean anything on its own. It doesn't have the trend. So we take a look at it over different time periods. Same business last year compared to this year. We look against standards, maybe industry average. What's the average supermarket industry have? It always has this. Because it might be getting better for you, but you might have been crap to start with. So what's Audi do? What's Coles do? And, and that also flows into with similar business. So you're comparing the ratios. Now, second last dot point under process of financial management is limitation of financial reports. I'm not going to lie to you. This, this one, I've taught it for quite a few years, and it's not hard when you get it. But it is a difficult one. So make sure you pay extra attention to that and don't feel silly if you don't get it straight away. But we look at some problems, some limitations of financial reporting, some issues that aren't on these reports. There's a thing called normalised earnings, capitalising expenses, valuing assets, timing issues, debt repayments. And then the good thing to address the limitation of these things, notes to financial statements. Sometimes on these financial statements, you'll see little... You know, um, little notes down the bottom, 
okay? And you'll see things that are trying to explain in more detail the financial report to you. That's the notes to the financial statements. They're good. They're not really a limitation, they're the opposite. But the rest are and we'll explain when we teach it to you in future class lessons and future YouTube clips. Now, last one of the processes are the ethical issues related to financial reports. And we take a look at um, the different ethical problems. Maybe again, banks should look into this and get some tips and ideas. All right, the last part of finance is financial management strategies. We have cash flow statements, or cash flow management's the first one. That includes cash flow statements, distribution of payments, discounts for early payment, and factoring. You must use these four things as your strategies when you're asked the question in the HSC about cash flow management. Now, in terms of working capital management, if you're asking a question about that, you must talk about leasing or sale and lease back as your strategies. Also, two other kind of strategies are control of current assets, which includes cash, receivables, and inventory, and control of current liabilities, which includes payables, loans, and overdrafts. Second last dot point, almost done. Profitability management. How do you make the cash the coin? You either make more profit, which are revenue controls, or more sales, which is revenue controls, so marketing objectives. You look at, there's three of them. Or you can control costs, reduce your costs. You look at your fixed and variable costs, you reduce them. They have cost centers and you minimize expenses for expense minimization, outsourcing and things. But the last thing that we take a look at is global financial management. They include things such as exchange rates, interest rates, methods of international payment, hedging and derivatives. All right, thanks guys, see you later.